Hai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, nama saya Syaidan Izham bin Yu Ibrahim. Um, hari ini we will have a webinar on uh, technologies to fight COVID-19. I think this might interest a uh, few of you guys audience on uh, on the subject. So basically what uh, we intend is more on the ideas uh, going to be thrown uh, what actually we can do to fight uh, COVID-19. Before we start, uh, I may start with the presentation of uh, the slide presentation. Uh, I will stop for a while to share my slide. All right. So I hope uh, everyone can see my slide. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, Today's subject is uh, technologies to fight COVID-19 from Cairo. First of all, before we start, people might ask what is Cairo? So Cairo is basically a center of uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. Um, all right. Yeah, that yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so Cairo is uh, uh, it's under UTM, University of Technology Malaysia. And with me is two very great gentlemen. Uh, I have here Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim and uh, IR Dr. Zul. So both of them will be presenting their case on uh, specifically on AI, uh, on how to fight COVID. So it's very specific uh, in terms of the subject, how to fight COVID. We are going to have an AI subject because uh, these two gentlemen is a uh, is a very subject matter expert and I have known Dr. Ibrahim for quite some time and I believe they will do a very great presentation after, after this. Before we start with the panel, uh, let me allow uh, to do some simple introduction. Our subject is on device uh, AI as a new normal. Of course, everyone is saying a new normal, even if we see uh, a a presentation by uh, DG, uh, DG KKM and uh, Prime Minister on the new normal. Everyone is mentioning on new normal. But this new normal is in fact, I, I believe we have to take it very seriously because uh, what WHO just announced that uh, this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic is going to be at least for another five years. So this is a very serious uh, consequences in terms of our behavior, how we react, how we go to work and so on. And uh, even currently, for your information, we are broadcasting from uh, Hubong Coast Space Office. So it's part of uh, Accent is also staying here. So we are maintaining a social distance here. Yeah, Dr. Ibrahim and Dr. Zul, all right. So you can see uh, we are on our very own laptop. Yeah, yes, we are. <laughs> Yeah, our very own laptop, and we will have uh, our own setup of our presentation. Okay, so continue to my introduction. So basically, we are already changed to the new normal. So no mass gatherings, schools and universities are closed, public transport are limited to few people. Uh, food have been transferred to our doorsteps. Uh, so this is kind of new normal that we are currently going through. And uh, of course, in terms of uh, uh, what we need to adapt. Okay, so going forward to this uh, discussion, I like to have some perspective and context on what we are going to discuss. So what we are going to discuss is basically to get some perspective and uh, the context so that we will go more detail on the subject later on. Okay. Basically, the, the healthcare system is the one who has been disrupted the most. We need to have a PPE, uh, a sudden PPE, a sudden order of PPE because of the spike cases of COVID-19 and then the bedding, uh, all the system, the healthcare system is not ready at the early stage of the, of the pandemic. And then, uh, but moving on, 
we have now in the CMCO period that we are allowed to work. Uh, some of like us here in office, we are allowed to work but only at 50% occupancy. So this have disrupt the way we normally behave or the way we normally uh, act to what we normally used to do. All right. And then uh, it's also important to mention that uh, uh, social distancing, this has been mentioned for, for quite some times and we are going to discuss about social distancing later on. And then the next one is the body temperature. Uh, we have a case of uh, going to malls, to Maso malls, but uh, we have to queue a long queue and this caused uh, a lot of uh, change in our behavior. All right. Moving forward uh, on the context uh, uh, social distancing, this as has been for mentioned for ourselves, for as for myself, and, and we are going to discuss about social distancing later on. So we have a lot of questions. So what we can do? What kind of technology available to embrace for this new normal? What can policymakers, let's say, for the government or uh, for department of Mosti or Miti? All right, so today we will have two speakers uh, from UTM Cairo. Uh, so this is a biography of the two panel speakers that we, uh, that we have today. First is Dr. Ibrahim Shafiai. So Dr. Ibrahim is from uh, UTM and he is a certified NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute, DLI. He's also a senior lecturer in UTM, uh, have a master in uh, University of York, in 2007 and PhD from UTM in 2013. So the description is long, yes, uh, but uh, he also visiting researcher at Faculty Design of Kyushu University, Japan and Associate Professor at Ramjin in March 2017. And uh, he is also study brain computer interface, BCI. So of course, uh, he will do uh, the first part uh, of the presentation. So explain more on what uh, technologies are to fight COVID-19. Right. The next speaker we have is uh, IR Dr. Zol. So IR Dr. Zol is uh, also from UTM Cairo and uh, he obtained a PhD in uh, Harriet Watts University in 2011. Uh, he has a bachelor degree and master engineering degree in uh, UTM, Skudai, and he is also uh, appointed as visiting researcher at Kyoto University and jo Jordan University of Science Technology. All right, so the description is what we have uh, shared, and he is also a, a subject matter expert on, uh, robo on robotics. So he will do the presentation on the second part. All right, so moving on. So as we... Uh, go to this uh, webinar. This is what we will discuss. Uh, for, for the first part is uh, artificial intelligence for portable temperature measurement in crop public area. This will be done by Dr. Ibrahim, yeah? Right, and then uh, part two is artificial intelligence to support industry social distancing. This is also uh, another interesting topic we done by uh, IR Zone. And then uh, we will also discuss uh, maybe a small portion of industry readiness for technology proposed and other technology available and post-lockdown uh, post problem statements. So I will pass the floor to the next, uh, to the first speaker, uh, Dr. Ibrahim. Um, so I will pass the slide presentation and pass to him. Thank you, Mr. Hold on, I just want to share my slide first. Sorry. Okay, everyone can see. Trying to make sure it's fine. So I believe now uh, I'm on the right slide. Okay. So, uh, Assalamu alaikum and uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Izaham as the moderator uh, in providing a very good place in for, for, for us to have a webinar in this afternoon. Okay. 
So we are live from Hubong uh, in Wangsa Maju. So this is like a new norm even for having this kind of setup. Again, uh, I think we have a very uh, important person at the back that makes uh, this thing happen. We have IR Solihin. He's not in the face, but I believe he's the one that makes this thing happen with the support from Exxon and also from the support by Cairo, right? We, uh, at the back, we have Katneni as well. Okay, thanks Katneni eh, for having us. Right, I think uh, let's move to uh, the first part uh, of the discussions. I think it is uh, more on uh, the project that we have started last two months at the beginning of COVID-19. Okay, when we have the lockdown, we call MCO. I think I still remember on 17 March 2020. At that time, uh, universities are struggling uh, to prepare all the online content. But at the same time, our research management center offering a new COVID grant. I think this is a very uh, tremendous job by the team that managed to uh, create like a normal environment for us to pitching to secure the grant. So what, uh, what we want to share today uh, is more on uh, AI for new norm. Okay, so we have uh, first part is artificial intelligence for portable temperature measurement in crowd public area. When our team started to prepare the proposal, uh, there are a lot of things uh, in our mind. Yeah, as a researcher, right, we have a lot of prepared topics to be, to present as a grant, I can say. But again, uh, when this has been offered by our RMC, uh, we from Cairo uh, have very clear motivations. So for this particular project, we believe during this pandemic, uh, a crop management to be handled, right? So authority needs to monitor for crowd management on body temperature rapidly to avoid people with COVID-19 infecting another person in crowd area. So since the beginning of the MCO, uh, this is not really an issue. Uh, of course, yes, um, but uh, the crowd stay in the home, stay at, stay at home, right? But you can imagine after the third phase, when some industry has been lifted up to go for the job. So this is the new norm when we are entering to new, I mean, to the premise, to the building, right? Long queue, uh, they are taking up our, I mean, measuring up our temperature, uh, getting our IC number, right? So why not? Uh, if you have a tools to help this one, um, to expedite the process. Okay. So this is the reality that we have to face as what Mr. Izzahan mentioned. This is maybe stay with us for another four to five years. Again, it's subject to whenever the vaccine is available to us. Right. So at Cairo, uh, this is what we can offer. Okay. This, even though this is a, a two months period of time that we have to develop this prototype, but with a a good ecosystem in Cairo. We have all the modules in AI and the automation system. So we believe that we can provide a fast, portable, and real-time monitoring system. First, to measure real-time body temperature. Again, even though this is not really the symptom, but again, this is what really happening now. What is in demand by the buildings owner especially okay so second to develop portable detection device with tracking capability so again this is come with the edge devices with ai and iot okay so the last one so far uh, to keep with the new norm all the measures to be easily available in in cloud so this is uh, the basic ideas that we from Cairo uh, trying to offer. So 
This is where we provide a portable temperature system measurements. So if you can see here, so all this, what we so-called like a pot gut, right? So if you go, so recently, if you heard, they have issue by the pot gut, right? Because it's been uh, uh, infected by COVID due to the close contact to, to, to the visitors. That's one of the issues that technology may combat it, right? So in the ground, so what we offer is to have the portable infrared camera for AI deep learning inference with AI IoT compatibility. And again, this is more on the concept, right? So if we move to the next one, so this is what we're trying to complete uh, in the next few months uh, while the grant is running. So we need to complete it by end of this month, uh, especially for the portable devices. So we believe that this uh, sensor temperature that we develop, at least we can provide like indicator uh, on the temperature measurements, okay? So it's embedded together with the uh, AI capability. All right, so this is a brief idea uh, on what we're trying to develop in Cairo. So in the ground station, people show mild fever as symptom in early COVID-19 infection. If the suspect rooms in public, healthy people can be infected. So authority needs to monitor people's body temperature rapidly fast body temperature measurement in real time by utilizing FLIR sensors and AI deep learning for face tracking. So again, in details on the cloud platform, what we can offer. Crowd information will update the latest information from the ground station, real time update in portal for rapid body temperature measure, centralized crowd management for authority decision. Okay, so this is, uh, in summary, we have all these main features on the uh, product development, okay? Indoor localization, uh, if no GPS satellite, real-time status for each device, show captured image for every device, personal location on the map. All right, so luckily, uh, we uh, funded uh, since the beginning of the COVID and in the MCO. So yeah, we are comp we almost ready, 95% ready. So looking for future funding if possible. And this is what we are currently parallelly developing uh, the cloud platform. All right, so I just want to share, uh, when the COVID comes uh, to, to the world, right? This small size of sensors, even I want to share, this is my real experience with uh, uh, the guy that I call IR Solihim. We even talked to one of the persons in, Aus in Australia, I believe, first. We're trying to make sure we can have this sensor immediately. Okay, if you can see, uh, what we're trying to offer is a sensor running at 120 times 160 resolutions. This is where you can see when they go to the next levels of resolutions, the price is exponentially high. So what I want to summarize here is, due to COVID, this is like a pisang goreng, okay? really like a pisang goreng because we're trying to secure these sensors, but again, it is very, very challenging. So end up, we managed to get, so the price that we shared here, this is uh, directly from US, but again, uh, for in order to complete this project, we need to get from, we're not so-called like a black market, but again, we got from Shenzhen, from China, where it costs us three times higher. You can imagine. So this is like, if you're trying to relate technology with a new normal, right? So there are a lot of opportunity for us, okay? Uh, in many ways. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things, right? <laughs> okay, so this is the fact and figures. So we not make a rocket sign even, but this is the real fact and figures of our development. Definitely it can detect virus, but detect elevated body temperature. Effective tool, measure skin surface temperature with calibrations. Skin key areas. So this is the specific corners of the eye and forehead. And then definitely, I think this is where now, I believe when I come to even to, to exit today, right? Um, 
you have to pass through all the process, the stringent process. Someone come to me, doctor, you need to give your forehead to me. I want to measure your temperature. That's the reality, right? So, but again, I think the guy is Azri is quite close to me just now, <laughs> right? So that's hopefully what we try and develop from Cairo can uh, be benefited to uh, to peoples in definitely in Malaysia. All right, so this is uh, for the last two months, okay? We're trying to have our uh, prototype ready. So yes, now it is ready with the ability to do all the tracking, okay? Uh, in the thermal base uh, images, okay? So hopefully it soon to be ready uh, with the, all the fabricated designs, right? So you can see from the video, hopefully it's running on your site. Okay, so this is uh, really developed from scratch, from the census in our lab. Right. It's excellent. Okay, so this is the real challenges. If you see on the slide, so this is from the beginning. So being researcher, right? So we always imagine what is the end of the development. So luckily I have a very young, talented guy from our department. Uh, I believe he's a first year student from MJIIT, uh, he helped me to design using the SOLIDWORKS to come up with a concept. So this is the concept on the, on the right. So people with the eyeglass, this is the eyeglass, and this is our uh, computing tools to, to do all the processing where we put all the algorithms, the AI algorithms and the IoT capability inside. So on the left side, okay, if you see there were a handsome guy on the left. This is uh, a guy from uh, one of the company that helped me to fabricate. So if you see, they have uh, from the concept to the prototype. Okay. So with the with the glass. So this is our sensor. It is embedded together with the glass. So I believe, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is ninety five percent ready. But again, this is still an open problem uh, from our side. But we believe we can do and complete it within the time frame. So challenges in on uh, challenges on the sensor validation. Sorry for that. Challenges on the sensor validation. So this is what we are trying to have. But again, if you're trying to focus on the elevated uh, temperature or the body temperature, I believe it should be fine now. It is work, working well. But again, to get almost like uh, three um, a very good accuracy on the temperature, we need more time to do the sensor validation. So again, I want to highlight here, software and hardware development is all are developed during the MCO times, right? So move to the next one. So I think um, this is the real benefit uh, impact uh, when we live in a new normal with uh, the technology that we believe we can develop locally. Okay, so first is a uh, game changes for thermal inspection with the AI development in embedded system with the portal update. Now it is portable, fast and portable with fast response on pandemic, especially during the COVID-19 pandemics. All right, I think uh, with that, uh, again, thank you. I pass back to the moderator, thanks. All right, thank you, Dr. Ibai. That is a very, very interesting presentation. Very excellent presentation, and personally, I'm I'm very much interested on the on the glass that you have presented, and I believe it's almost ready. the The system is almost ready. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is around ninety five percent ready. The software is ready, um, and the fabrication is also. Uh, I believe um, the first second uh, level of design is ready. Presentation. Hopefully by tomorrow, the company will give the funding end of the applications, and then we can integrate with our software development. Wow, yeah, exactly. that, that is just excellent. So I think from, from my point of view, currently we have a very serious case of pandemic. So if this thing can be developed by uh, researchers in Cairo during the MCO period, so can you imagine if we are not in MCO, so how fast we can develop this prototype? 
So meaning to say, what uh, what we can try to push, actually we need to push this thing together. We need to push this idea together so that it can be deployed to the public, to the frontliners. So I think the, the next frontliners that will be most important is the security guard that you just mentioned just now. The security guards, police officers, uh, uh, army and so on. So this kind of frontliners that require this kind of technology. Right. So, all right. Never mind. But it's a very interesting topic uh, by Dr. Ibrahim just now. So we might have some question later on. But uh, next, we will move to the second speaker, uh, IR Dr. Zo. So, uh, so I pass the floor to Dr. Zo for the presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, our moderator today. Yeah. Uh, and let me share my slides. Okay, um, yeah, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, myself for providing the space and again, uh, my topic related to the social distancing and how we can help the industry to maintain and keep the social distancing between the workers. Basically, this uh, work is running during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and we try to develop and uh, tackle the problem uh, based on the input from the industry. So yeah, this is a really challenging for us because the company is not based in Malaysia, it's based from Japan. And uh, again, uh, we have the very frequent meeting uh, uh, with the industry partners and to see how we can come up with the, and, uh, what we call the concept of uh, our solutions. But uh, today's agenda, basically I want to split into two. And the first one um, covering more the HAI and why the HAI is quite important to tackle the uh, social distancing and how will it help the company which is uh, mainly driven by the human. Because some uh, warehouse company, they fully automated, but still they have the logistic company, I mean, uh, operated by the humans. And I, I believe during the COVID-19 uh, 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 period, that's quite a lot of the people order from the Lazada and I think the uh, the, what we call the users are waiting to uh, make the order through the online and waiting the item to arrive there at their house. But uh, behind the scenes, basically, there's an operator or the humans still work, doing the work. Before I go to further uh, case study, I would like to highlight uh, basically uh, what is uh, edge computing on uh, what we call on the device AI and why it's mainly important for the uh, industry to deploy the each computer on, on device AI. And you see the, what we call it, the cloud is uh, covering on the downstreams and your data on your uh, where, wearable, the IoT, your sensors, the thermal sensor just now as mentioned by Dr. Ibrahim, covering on the uh, upstream part. And in between they have like that data transmission and also the uh, re request and also the pull of data from the cloud and also the data provider. And there's lots of traffic along, uh, along the, what we call the line and along the network. And sometimes the network is not a really, uh, what we call uh, consistent. And they have the intermittent uh, communication between the users as well as the cloud. And, but again, most important point on the cloud service and also the edge computing that provide uh, more toward the privacy protections. That's why the industry want to protect on their worker side. They want to make sure that the worker is not uh, identity or the uh, face recognition, etc., is not going to the cloud. So they want to make sure that all detection uh, within their premise, within their uh, factory only. So going to the next slides are uh, on the on-device AI application, how we help the logistic company driven by the human power using the AI technology. And basically for the certain company, uh, only a certain people can follow the SOP. To be honest, all people, they know the the severity of the uh, COVID-19, they still keep the distance. But uh, some people, uh, they don't really follow the, what we call the uh, social distancing. They just keep uh, what we call sitting together along and regardless the, what we call the authority put the markers as on the seat, etc. Uh, still people the kind of uh, neglect the SOP and do their uh, so that they can uh, have the fast uh, process uh, at the premise, etc. So that's why we want to make sure that our technology is really can tackle covering both 
uh, for the worker is following the guideline and also the worker is not follow the guideline. And on the logistic part, basically there's a lot of company, I believe uh, some of the, uh, what we call your partner at home waiting for the DHL, Gadex and uh, Lazada to um, for the items to arrive at home and also post Malaysia. And again, this uh, logistic company, they, they operate uh, what we call uh, uh, through the automated process. And we try to cover on the um, warehouse, which is our logistic company, which is uh, have the human or operated by the human. And the human will collect the item from the shelf to the, uh, what we call the, uh, to the cart or to the counter. So we try to maintain uh, each worker distance between worker A and worker B while uh, making the uh, fast process uh, along the way. Again, uh, this is some kind of similar uh, where you go to IKEA uh, store, uh, you make an order, you know which uh, shelf you're going to uh, going through and you pick up the items and you uh, go to the counter and do the uh, purchasing. But uh, again, for the warehouse, it's the same concept. But when you have the uh, more orders during the COVID-19, more people looking to uh, have the packaging very fast. That's why the social distancing among the workers is very important. And basically, this work, uh, this work is a uh, collaboration with the one of the logistics companies in Japan. We try to co co give the solution for them on the what we call the solution on the AI for the social distancing and also the batching uh, processing uh, for the, their items. And we collaborate uh, before the, uh, what we call PKP or MCO. We try to make sure that all those uh, information during the COVID-19, uh, we exchange the information among them. And that's why we uh, visit the lab before the MCO and to try to see how we can uh, position ourselves as an industry and also in the uh, university, have the same as an understanding on the what we call the solution that come, come out uh, later. So one important point when, uh, what we call uh, from the industry point of view, they want to see that the combination of locations because everyone can do, can do the detections. You can do the person detections from A to B, face recognition from A to B, but from uh, industry point of view, once you detect, you have must know the location of that person. That's why we need to know once you detect, you can trace where the person going to which column or which shelf, for example. And after that, once you know the locations, you also know the location of the items and uh, based on the barcode locations. So this information or location of the barcode and also the information of the stations very crucial to align to the information of the persons so that if you know that the, this particular area is not much crowded because they would want to collect the same item that like you go to the uh, supermarket you know that during COVID-19, there's a lot of uh, people going into the uh, one particular station, like the bakery stations, because they want to purchase the uh, roti. So people go into that particular place and lots of people. So in this particular case, also the example, we want to make sure that we know the information of the person, we know the information of the items, as well as the barcode uh, systems. So we try to align these three information together into our optimization uh, problems. Okay, um, this is uh, came directly from the uh, director of the council. So again, you see that the example here, the onboard is very important where you see that one particular worker, they try to collect the same, um, gather at the same po uh, point or stations. So this is uh, the issue for the industry, how we try to manage and relocate the item probably or relocate the worker so that it's not uh, staying at the same places at the same time because we uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, we can align the worker and what we call the items and the barcode systems uh, could be separate and uh, distributed uh, equally uh, along the warehouse station and again uh, their concern is um, what's the accuracy of the forecasting of the worker progress uh, as well as the distribution planning because this why uh, we can uh, the, come up with the AHAI because we can further improve their move, uh, worker movement and also distribution of the items. Uh, so you say that the worker is going to the same place, we can distribute the item into the different places. But 
on the limitation on the asset, the current cloud service, again, uh, I tried to highlight three here because they say that some uh, warehouse is very limited uh, transmission video. So at least we can do the detection optimized on the premise. And as well as the information of the video, we have to decode and code uh, before we upload into the cloud. So it's not really practical because when you decode and uncode, consume lots of energy and uh, we'll be much concerned from their uh, side and as well as the latency uh, because they want uh, instantaneous uh, decisions so they, was the, they try to make sure that if they we develop the system that can solve the latency problems it's very much appreciated and again i mentioned here uh, three uh, important information the location of the worker where the location item and also the station this is very important for the operation analysis from industry point of view they look into the operation productivity they look into the how the item place and trace the object uh, the worker and also the station and from from the location we can track how long the package move from one position to the other positions and connect into the warehouse design and after that uh, they can classify more importantly they classify unnecessary process of uh, this is what uh, the social distancing came in because we want to make sure we can classify which uh, process we can uh, do the social distancing first say for example they have few category uh, for the worker uh, this is a uh, team from the industry they have the movement placing the object scanning the invoice this is normal operation the manual operation by the workers to move the object so lots of movement we see that the item one item three item four item five is lots of movement uh, from one position to other position it's semi-operated and uh, takes some time uh, to operate so we need to make sure that uh, we can analyze the uh, worker status or behavior and we, uh, promote the social distancing uh, based on the optimization problems Okay, next is uh, this is example. I show you the one example that one more worker basically try to pick up one item by one items based on the chef A, chef B, chef C, and chef, uh, chef D, etc. So this is the normal process that uh, what we call the without the optimizations. And after we introduce optimization, is the worker instead of work one worker or one operator. Uh, Working alone to the, the this, uh, what we call the same uh, chef, they can have like uh, walking distance very short now. Just go to the chef A and collect the whole object into the uh, uh, what we call gate of system. So this is we call the multiple uh, picking systems. And um, after we do the multiple picking system, we need to make sure that uh, we can optimize it. So once we detect using the edge and we do the optimizations. Based on optimizations, we know that this worker, they, at this particular time, they go to chef A, B, and C. And after that, we can ask the second worker to go to uh, what we call that other particular chef. So that is not overlapping or they can maintain the social distance. So that's why we want to highlight uh, uh, for the uh, sharing today. And this is uh, our onboard solutions that we can trace uh, the workers as well as we can do the map based on the grid uh, systems and this is uh, the operator that's doing the movements and we can locate the persons uh, inside the layout and when the worker move the the position of the worker will move as well as the the status now is doing the picking so this is the very important for the company to arrange and locate the, uh, the position of the workers and they can align based on the batching optimization Okay, that's all for sharing on the application case study, basically for the warehouse uh, industry. Back right. to the moderator. Thank you, Dr. Zul. Uh, if I may, if you can uh, go back to the to the slides on the on the graph that have the Japanese character there. All right. So yeah. Okay, as, as what I can understand from this uh, presentation is basically we try to put uh, a batch uh, movement 
Yes. Uh, on on any, but for this particular is on the warehouse case. But actually, from this warehouse case, we can actually apply to a uh, supermarket for the counter and so on. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because uh, this is something similar. We we go to uh, yeah shopping mall or the IKEA store. Right. When you place order, you don't want to make sure that people go into the same shelf and queue at the shelf. Yeah. So we try to optimize. Probably you have other things that you can do while waiting. The other pick up the object or pick up the items. Right. So this is a uh, I mean application on the warehouse, and we we can tailor this uh, solution for the shopping mall or others. Uh, application as well oh okay that is a uh, very great okay so thank you Dr. Zul, for, for for the presentation and the, the idea that that is very interesting all right so we have completed two subjects two parts uh on the presentation actually i feel both of the presentation part one and part two is very beneficial uh technology that we can try and push for deployment to, to the industry i think it's very important so we hope that uh, this webinar will get some of the attention from from the policy makers as well because uh, as much as uh, utm is concerned or cairo is concerned they need continuous grind to do their research and the development of the prototyping but in terms of let's say for, for me to go to industry level so we need to have this prototype and go for uh, a larger scale production so we need to have some kinds of uh, uh, grants or financing right so that we actually can help people to deploy uh, so that they can use this kind of technology because it is not something that is we cannot do it's not a rocket science for us it's something that can be done and a uh, team from Cairo have demonstrated that this thing is ready so i just do hope that we can actually get this attention so that actually we can assist or maybe a utm Cairo team can assist on the policy makers or any industry that interested to fund for this and to push for the product to be on in the market all right so moving forward, uh, I will share um, my next slide on, on the agenda. So we continue with our agenda. All right. So the next one would be industry readiness for the technology proposed. All right. So uh, for this one, I think uh, basically the idea is to have industry readiness. So in terms of uh, how can this technology be taken up for the for the public or the any any industry to take so we pass this uh, question to uh, dr zo to answer this uh, question okay thank you very much uh, moderator basically uh, on the technology uh, industry readiness for the technology as uh, i present just now uh, some industry very keen to deploy this is because there's no option uh, for them uh, to monitor and also to track their workers' uh, status. And when they, uh, what we call, this is some of uh, what we call uh, experience from uh, a, a project we've uh, we done so far. And they throw the idea because they, they know that they have uh, facing the problem of the uh, limitation of the worker, for example, the limitation of the uh, equipment that arrived. So they want to make sure how to replace uh, these things there should be a technology that support uh, so that the business keep going and they still can deliver what the even the pandemic era they still can deliver the business and also can support their business for the uh, uh, long run and also even we talking about the post covid here the process of the social distancing or the thermal imaging and in fact last week we have the talk from uh, our colleague from cairo robotics as well so robotics is part of the important uh what we call the uh, uh technology uh, you know the magic yeah uh what we call the robot so this is a uh, technology that can support not only the warehouse and also the hospital any in the industry related because we don't even uh the uh, tracing of the person etc is not really uh 
handled by the human. It should be a technology that really can support the uh, what we call the tracing of a human and also the persons. And this is the expected for the proposed call date. We have to, um, I mean, the opportunity is open now for the researcher. We are in the, uh, from the researcher point of view. It, uh, from the best of our, of our experience, uh, stay at home. We also try to develop uh, something that can be useful for the industry. So, yeah, this is my general uh, response to the uh, what we call the readiness of the industry, yeah, which is based on the, my experience uh, for the last two months. Okay, that is a very uh, interesting take, uh, Dr. Zul. So, well, basically, what I can take out from there on the academia uh, point of view, you guys are ready. You guys can actually take up the, the problem, any problem. But uh, I think as part of the industry, we we need to have some kind of uh, uh, exploration as well on what is available in the market from from the academia. Right. So I okay. The next I, I will ask uh, opinion from Dr. Ibrahim as well. So what was your opinion on this matter, Dr. Ibrahim? I'd like to highlight what I still remember on the beginning of the slide by our moderator, who's to be assigned uh, as a person, as a digital transformer guy. Is it CTO? Is it CEO? But again, uh, I think the question is industry readiness for technology purpose. So again, COVID is the, the de facto, the reasons. Everyone has to move. I think this is where the opportunity comes in, where we believe uh, in Malaysia. We have a good talents in the university. We have a good companies, right? So I think uh, at least uh, the questions uh, where I try to respond this question is, we are living in a new normal. So whatever we can grab, I think uh, industry, when we talk uh, to industry, I think recently have a, uh, opportunity to talk with uh, Izam, right? So maybe I can try to relate a little bit about with the new technology available. Okay. So I think he's posed a very interesting uh, topics uh, that whether we are ready or not, or what the technology available or not. So for instance, we are discussing about the AI or any devices that may help on the what they call food security, right? So, whatever we go, the 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 the, uh, the reference to us is our food uh, food supply chain. Right? So, I think this is uh, another technology that uh, I think uh, at Cairo we we do uh, explore a few things on the robotics and the AI recently. So, I think everyone heard about Machikia, and I think. We have our director, Dr. Atif, uh, working on ventilators. But again, uh, when we talk about the technology available, so what we have, we need to scale into industry needs. I, I believe the expectation from the industry is quite high. But again, we have the fundamentals in the university. So let, let's put uh, the food security, uh, I think, uh, on, the, on the food, uh, on the tree the crop productions, for instance. I think, uh, for instance, uh, I think we, we talked to Exxon recently. They are expertise in on the piping design, on the electrical work, on the engineering work. We just need to bring, for instance, the module on the AI as a tool and IoT to be embedded together, where we talk about the abundant building during the, after the post-COVID. Um, like it or not, I think some, some of us uh, in industry has to be uh, released from the job with, with, with uh, the economy in fact, right? So I think uh, he's highlighted, even we just talk, but again, this is something is good for us to, to explore. So uh, let me summarize this way. So industry readiness or not for the technology proposed, again, everyone has to put into picture uh, because of the COVID-19, like it or not, so whatever available technologies that I think that can strengthen in between university and industry, again, Cairo is welcome to everyone to work with us, uh, definitely. 
I think uh, that's uh, my, my response on these two issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ibrahim. Yeah. All right. You bring up a very interesting topic there on the on the uh, urban farming. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, yes. So, coming back to to our situation now. So we are in a pandemic. So, like I have mentioned, we are going to have this for another five years. So, a lot of things that will happen for the next five uh, five years, nobody knows. But there is a technology available. There is a ways available. And being here, human being, we will adapt to whatever the scenario or whatever the circumstances have been. So uh, again, on the I like to touch a bit on the urban farming. So basically, we have talked uh, earlier with, with Dr. Ibrahim on, on this urban farming because the concern is more on the food security. So on the food security, I believe there is a lot of uh, uh, initiative that have been done in terms of uh, urban farming. So there's a lot of uh, small initiative in terms of uh, converting the old buildings to have uh, uh, crops, farmings and so on. But uh, I don't see there is a scale that we can do it uh, at, at a scale that we can help a B40. So, so urban farming can actually help B40. So these are the segments that if given opportunities, I think we believe Cairo can do a presentation to the policymakers so that we can assist uh, from the industry point of view and from the academia point of view. We can bring up these ideas uh, to, to the policymakers. I think that might help, even if it's not the technology as per se that we are discussing right now, but as uh, AI and uh, robotics and the technology available in terms of uh, we are fighting this uh, COVID-19, I think there is a way and we have the knowledge, we have the experts, we have a capacity to do this. So I believe this thing can be done in, in our very near future. So, <laughs> as as an industry player, or I'm not supposed to talk about this, but uh, as an industry player, I, I'm looking at this at a very positive way that we can contribute to the to the public thank you all right uh, so next we move to the q and a session so um from from the q and a session i think i'm going to have a few uh few questions uh, wait a moment, yeah. All right. Okay, I think I'm going to ask uh, one one other question. Okay. So this is, I think, the, the question from a student. As, as a research student, in what way can I contribute to further improve the system? Uh, so maybe I can pass the question to Dr. Zul to answer. OK, thank you. Uh, very interesting questions uh, about the um, students that are interested to further improve the, the flood system. I think uh, we're talking about the current prototype or current solutions. There's a lot of things we, we can improve because, again, Dr. Ibrahim mentions about the, the thermal detections, how accurate of the systems uh, we try, we want to uh, detect because when we use the normal temperature detector, it should be like a uh, tolerance uh, less than one degree or two degree. But using the thermal session, no contact uh, thermal detector should be, I mean, is it on par or far behind the uh, detection? Because one degree or two degrees is quite matter for the doctor, uh, especially. And again, on the what we call improvement on the develop of uh, AI for the warehouse system, is, yeah, we need the students and also the people that can develop, uh, improve on the optimizations. 
at the current moment, we use the uh, SA simulated annealings that uh, optimize the worker coordinates or the worker position or locations. Now we try to explore other things, optimization, uh, enforcement learnings, uh, yeah, and colony GA systems that again give a better result. So that uh, yeah, using the same uh, data, we uh, can produce a much uh, improved version of the optimizations. That's my take slide. Where the students have a lot of things and probably they can, I mean, take as a challenge for their study. Okay. I think my quick response on the questions um, on the opportunity. I think um, those who are from uh, either from Cairo or from MGIIT, I think recently uh, we already posed uh, some few questions. I believe Dr. Zoom and myself already posed. Uh, some specific topics uh, that related either for your master study or for your final year project, those who are in undergraduate. Yes, definitely uh, you are so much welcome because there are many ways, uh, there are many things to be, be, to be done uh, on the uh, research perspective. But again, on the academia side, uh, there are a lot of analysis to be carried out. But again, what I want to highlight, uh, even though we need to have a lot of analysis on this one, again, whenever it is ready uh, to be deployed, uh, I think the feedback is really important. This is like our previous experience when we deploy an uh, AI system for semiconductor industry. So we just release first because AI is by nature, in my understanding, AI by nature, uh, there is no like a shelf solution it always comes with the customizations. So the earlier you come into the business, uh, the better you are understanding on that one. So, so let me put it this way. So when we already at the development stage on the AI, so the research can go in parallel. So again, yes, we are welcome anyone. Uh, feel free to come to Cairo to join our research study. Or even I think Kaneni, we have more and more opportunity right in Cairo. All right, I think uh, that's my quick response on this one. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ibrahim and Dr. Zul for, for, for the answers. I think it's more on the opportunity given uh, currently, because I, I think uh, both of uh, you guys have mentioned the opportunities is there. The opportunities is always there for anyone to come in and to contribute uh, in terms of uh, development of AI. Uh, but I think the most important thing is to have the interest uh, to solve the problem. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, but uh, yes, that one from, from the academia point of view, I think there is a lot of students. Uh, I believe there is a lot of students that are interested in doing this AI and robotics especially if given a, a set of problems, I, I believe they can, they are eagerly want to solve uh, this kind of problem, right? So yes, thank you so much. So we go to the next question. We go to the next question. Uh, okay, I think this one is more on the AI developers. Uh, the question is, while working from home, how to ensure all AI developers can achieve the milestone? Uh, so maybe uh, I can ask Dr. Zul first on, the, on this one. Uh, how do we want to do this? Okay, uh, yeah, because some project is really very tight, uh, what we call time frames. Uh, the developers have to follow and try to add any uh, established AI uh, because we have to test um, for the, some uh, problems should be available or uh, uh, what we call this uh, air solution uh, on the, for example, on uh, from the other uh, researcher. So from uh, our team, uh, we almost have a discussion uh, like two days uh, for a week. Uh, we discuss about the matter related. Is it uh, solution is uh, AI solution is possible or not? And after the discussion, uh, we try to adapt a new type of uh, what we call model into the uh, what we call, for example, the uh, AI detections. So these kind of things happen every week. So the students engage uh, with developer with the team leader is very crucial. Communication is very important. Even though we stay at home, 
we still communicating through the uh, what we call through the WebEx or uh, Zoom meet meetings, and developer must update their progress every uh, every single day. And towards the end of the weeks, we try to have the meetings to discuss how we can tear up uh, an alternative, uh, find the alternative to solve that particular problems. But uh, yeah, the, the challenge is, uh, we are lucky because uh, developer don't need the physical hardware to stay next to the computer. Mm -hmm. So they can do the remotely using the cloud as well as the uh, other GPU and come up with their algorithms and uh, pro uh, what we call uh, propose their solution to the industry. All right. Maybe Dr. Faber have some answers on this one as well? Okay. Uh, I think quick response. Uh, but again, uh, it is really challenging working during the MCO. Being mm -hmm. academic, of course, we have online class. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I believe everyone. So we have to adapt with this new normal, right? Okay. I think a quick response on this one. Um, I think uh, when we talk about AI, um, center of uh, Cairo. I mean Cairo per se. Right? Uh, we have been established since 1997. So recently in 2015, uh, we are the first one that having uh, what we so call a supercomputer in our lab. Right? We we have the uh, NVIDIA DGX, right? This is a really helps us uh, on the modeling. For instance, uh, again, uh, those who are familiar with the Docker system, right? Dockering system. So again, uh, we, we have almost like a module. We have a module A for detection, module B for classification, module C for segmentation. All this module is already been dockerized. So again, uh, sometime uh, what we're trying to share here, this is maybe my limited experience uh, or my little experience on dealing with industry. But again, uh, sometimes what we have in industry, uh, in university somehow is already sufficient enough to, to, to solve the immediate problem in industry. Right? So let me tell you this way. Let's say I have my module on, uh, we already been dockerized. Dockerized is like a container. This is what we have now. We have the container system. So we just ask, um, basically, uh, I think that's uh, the best part somehow. I think uh, this is how we do, right? That is a uh, first year student come, do all the labeling of data, 1,000 images, 2,000 images. This is the struggling part during MCO. For instance, I have one RA. So we did uh, on the face uh, labeling. So he has to spend like from, he. Uh, I'm, I'm fine because during MCO, I, I don't care. My staff working at any time. So he start his work at 5 p.m. He's finished his work around, I think, 3 in the morning. So because at that time, I don't have my uh, undergraduate student. So I asked him to do all the 23, 23,000 of images of labeling of face in uh, Inferno, or I call a thermal based images of images. So he has to complete. So again, so this is one of the challenging part. Okay, labeling the data set where this is a new to our lab. <laughs> but the dockering system is already there. Once you finish the labeling, we put in our docker, like uh, you can imagine like uh, coffee machines. We put in the coffee machine, the coffee machine will do the model. We get the model and then we start to uh, have the model and do the inference and keep improving the model. So I think that, that is a quick response. So luckily, I think in Cairo, we have uh, the facilities. Uh, again, we offer to outside, those who are interested to work with us, uh, to open for any collaborations. Uh, as we have the, the, the machines and we have the capability, inshallah. Uh, thank you. I think now we can offer the qualified labelers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think that uh, because I, I uh, thanks to the zone. I think when we talk about this one last time, people are talking about uh, people in database, right? But I think I I'm, I'm with the zone. Uh, we have uh, several series with industry last time under MDAC. So we're trying to create a new job, data labeling guy. But again, of course. Uh, we have a lot of tools to expedite all the data labeling, but I think that's a nice keyword. So that's somehow we offer to our first year student to do all this job. I think we do really appreciate, I think with all the support by our student, that's really helped us to uh, make, uh, to expedite the data labeling. Thanks. All right, thank you. That, uh, all right, that, that kind of challenges that uh, you guys are facing. So, 
of course we cannot see that maybe the 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 ai programmers and so on uh, are facing that kind of uh, the problems so yes that that's very interesting take so we are almost uh, to the end of our webinar so i will i will get one more question uh, i think the last question uh, before we can uh, conclude this session okay so the question the final question will be what is the impact to industry and economy if full ai implementation is successful this is a very interesting question i think it's a very broad uh, general uh, ideas on how what we can achieve if full ai have been implemented um, so maybe dr zul can start to answer this one first before then we can pass to dr ibrahim <laughs> okay, uh, okay uh, respond to the impact of to the industry economy if uh, fully implemented. I think uh, yeah, because AI uh, is, I mean, they su still supported by the back end. I mean, the technology uh, mainly on the uh, processing. Now Google it is the TP, uh, what you call it, the tensor processing unit, and they have the edge TPU as well. So uh, yeah, still uh, I believe. It's not really fully uh, fully implemented, so it's stage by stage uh, before it can fully uh, implemented. And I mean, towards the three or four, uh, five years, and yeah, we look to the tier our the direction uh, mainly on the AI community. But because I uh, really concern on me is uh, on the talent, because talent is quite important before we can fully implement uh, for the AI in, for this country and also economy. That's why our challenge in the uh, university. In fact, we have the good students. They still look to have the opportunity to go abroad, I mean, to Singapore, to other countries, because they offer much better salaries compared to the local uh, environment. <laughs> so I think that's the challenge uh, before we're talking about the full implementation. Uh, and towards the end, yeah, we always encourage the students to take the AI, but for them, some students very reluctant. They saw the Python, they skip away. <laughs> it's not talking about the AI yet. But the Python, the program is, is very challenging for them. So this is our, I mean, uh, as academicians, we try to nurture our students on the programming side before they, I mean, really uh, explore into the AI experience. But uh, yeah, it's good for uh, for the nation, for the country that really supported the, uh, yeah, but let's say one day we have the full implementation. It's really supported uh, to do the predictions, for example, to manage the crisis. So yeah, it's uh, very, very beneficial on that, that one. I think I left to Dr. Ibrahim to continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already in the safe side. <laughs> Thanks, moderator. <laughs> okay, uh, but I, I need to prepare for my conclusion remark then. <laughs> okay, uh, a quick response again. Uh, uh, we, we, we do have uh, talked about this one a lot. I think I, I just want to touch on uh, the, the worry of when the full scale of AI could be deployed. Maybe in Malaysia it could uh, take some time because we see now a big, uh, big, big companies already come into Malaysia. Uh, I, I put that one aside, maybe as a, my conclusion remark. Uh, but again, uh, what I want to highlight is uh, first, um, maybe if we can align with the COVID 19. First, we talk last time when we talk about IR 4.0. This is somehow one of the topic in IR 4.0. We have the AI inside of the, of, the, of the pillars. So people always worry about the job cutting. So even the IR 4.0 is not being implemented because of COVID, job cutting is already there, right? So I think let's put uh, on the full scale uh, in the needs of, uh, on the perspective of job augmentations. Right. I think this is a, the best keyword always been highlighted. Even if you go to Google, right, people always talk about job augmentations. So why we as a people with a good brain to do, for instance, uh, I have one uh, experience working with uh, one of the industry to do uh, lungs uh, X-ray screening using the eyesight. You can imagine every day they have 1,600 images of X-ray. So there are four of them, and finally to be uh, 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 to be validated by the uh, by the radiologist, right? The, the chief of the radiologist. But again, you can imagine every day they come, they just need to screen the X-ray of the I mean the lung X-ray, one thousand six hundred. Sometimes they just miss everything. 
So I think before we talk about uh, the full scale of AI, let's put in our mind, let's make ready for our job augmentation. That is this aligned to our uh, the needs or maybe because of the pandemic. So get the mentor ready, put in the right place. So being a real academician as well, to work with the industry, know the real challenge. Otherwise, uh, for me, before I start to, to do some uh, industry work, sometimes my work is just like short sendiri, I can say. Currently speaking, uh, because, yeah, of course, I'm not a good researcher, but we are interested to solve real mankind problem. Okay, so my takeaway okay, for this one, before the full scale is ready for the job augmentation. Put the right people to the right job. So I think we can benefit as a country. So, right, thank you. Right, that is a very interesting take uh, from both of you guys. Uh, I think what I can take from uh, Dr. Zoll just now is more the employability. As much as uh, anyone want to go on this AI, then there is a lot of opportunity of opening for this one because AI is still new. AI is still new, then there is a lot of potential that can be developed uh, in whatever segment that you want to develop on the AI. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's very huge and it's very wide uh, perspective. And then what I take from uh, Dr. Ibrahim uh, points is basically we should go on a specific task because we are talking about AI is very being wide. So if you want to solve a problem, we cannot solve all problem at one time. So as uh, what uh, Dr. Ibrahim has mentioned just now, since we are now in a pandemic situation, we should focus more on the AI and robotic capability in terms of uh, healthcare system, for example, like the X-ray uh, data imaging for the X-ray. Uh, let's say we are talking about uh, food security and all these kind of segment, very critical, essential uh, segment that can cater for AI and robotics. That is where the technology can comes in. It's more on the opening up the problems and. These two gentlemen can solve all the problems. Is that so? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. So we are finally on the on conclusion uh, set of this webinar. So thank you to all conducting uh, uh, live uh, view us live from anywhere on FB Live. So we also want to thank you to these two speakers uh, for coming in our office. Uh, and we also like to thank you on the support team. Uh, we have uh, all the background crew that are working right here and remotely as well. But before I conclude, I would like to have uh, both uh, Dr. Zol and Dr. Ibrahim to give a closing remarks. And, uh, and then we will just finish this uh, webinar. So, Dr. Zul. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, as a concluding remark, uh, actually, the COVID-19 is uh, really, op I mean, open lots of opportunity, uh, mainly for the research on the AI. And again, uh, we tried to help the, I mean, our nation here, our industries, and again, our uh, researcher. Uh, to come up with the new technologies uh, from Cairo. I think so, since last week, we uh, sharing the technology on the ventilator uh, and also the matchy. And today we're sharing uh, technology on thermal as well as the social distancing. And this technology really, uh, uh, I mean, try to help the uh, country to fight the COVID-19. And I mean, again, we as a Cairo and also the academician, we offer people outside, that the students, industries, as well as uh, uh, what we call the partners to collaborate and also, uh, again, we fight together on the COVID-19. And before I end this, I would like to say Islamat uh, Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. Because this is really important, uh, I mean, for the food security. Kadang-kadang telur tak cukup. Okay, I think uh, that's my uh, uh, remark for the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zul. Now I'll give to Dr. Ibrahim on the conclusion remark. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you for, I think, uh, again, uh, this
which is a very good opportunity. Uh, but before I do my concluding remarks, don't forget Cairo have another talk series. I believe after the next, after the Hari Raya break, uh, we have our next speakers from Cairo as well. I believe on Tuesday afternoon for the session. Okay, uh, my thought uh, on, again, uh, I think I like to talk with the industry. For instance, we talked to uh, IR Solihin last time, which is from MIE industry and Berhad. So whenever they have a pandemic or any problems, it always comes with the opportunity. Rain with a rainbow, right? So it is, I think uh, the best point, I think, uh, is how mentioned last time. I remember, uh, if I can quote this way, uh, with this pandemic, right, it seems like those who are keep with their business, or even in university, I can say, those who are keep on their discipline, or the industry, for instance, right? So when the MCO lifted up again, full, I believe, hopefully by 9 of June, right? So I think those who are looking for the initiative or new, uh, 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 new new things, right? So we are just like starting at par for everyone, for those who are starting with the first step. So what we want to share here, uh, AI is a tool. Tools mean, that's why you can see AI in many disciplines. So let's have uh, a good talk and discussion. We are free uh, to work with your exam, to work with any industry. We are from Cairo offering uh, consultations work, uh, we offering uh, the design, okay? So let's make uh, uh, the opportunity on our side when we are written back to our job, uh, to our office in a new normal. Think uh, again, why AI is important? Because big companies can come. Even recently, I talked to Kinetica. We have the opportunity to talk with the Kinetica. Uh, even recently, we also discussed with uh, Huawei to establish our AI lab in Cairo and JIT. So you can see they, they are looking for uh, the collaboration to produce more talents. But with the Kinetica, uh, it's quite interesting. They're trying to understand the Malaysian domain topics or Malaysian domain problems. So this is where maybe um, I can say we as academia can offer us some uh, insight to these big companies, especially on uh, the AI modeling where the level of customization, in my understanding, is very, very high, right? I think with that, sebelum saya lupa, so sama lah seperti Dr. Zul. Selamat Hari Raya, maaf saya batin daripada saya dan semua kru kat sini dan juga daripada warga Cairo, kepada semua ada yang menonton kita di Facebook lah. Terima kasih lagu Denam Perantau eh, satu nanti. <laughs> okay, terima kasih. Alright, so we will conclude this session. Uh, thank you very much everyone and selamat Hari Raya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.